This pimped up Omega 500 has given me so much joy the last few months. There is one thing that troubles me, and if I run into some kind of problems, I need to be able to diagnose it. And I don't have an internal floppy drive. The Amiga is um, from factory setup to only be able to boot into the first floppy drive, which is the internal, on older kickstarts. And if I have a trouble with the Pi Storm or something, something, and I need to put it back into its original state and troubleshoot it, look for memory errors, etc. I need to be able to boot uh, from a floppy drive. And there is no room for, that sounds stupid, but there is no room for an uh, uh, internal one in here. So my goal for today is to inter insert yet another trip racer for the CIA and mount this switch to make the computer be able to boot on older kickstarts from DF1. My DF1 I plan to put into an old broken external case, a GoTech into that and use that. So that's the plan for tonight. Let's first just put the monitor out of the way and open the case. And inside we need to remove the CIA chip. I don't have a chip puller, so I use the wiggle wiggle method. It's not ideal, but it works. No bent pins. The DF1, DF0 floppy drive selector is available from many places. Uh, Amigastore.com is one of them. And they are available for the 500, 500 plus and 2000. Next up is to mount the CIA chip on this riser. And there is a nudge there that shows where the nudge on the chip should go. And then it's just a matter of connecting the switch and put the chip back in its place. To fasten the switch I just use some velcro bands, not sure what they're called, like this. Easy to remove again. It's time to test, so let's connect the external drive. It doesn't read floppies correct, but it does make the ticking while looking for a disk. And now the Amiga is booting and it should start to make those famous Amiga ticking sounds. And it does. That was quite easy and it works. Uh, the external flop floppy drive is now working as the internal floppy drive. And if I turn off the computer and uh, flip the switch, it goes back to the floppy drive disabler, which is there because the Amiga looks for a drive for quite a time during boot. So, and if it doesn't find one, this takes quite a long time. So the floppy disabler uh, makes the computer just boot faster. Nothing more fancy than that. Next up is to remove the drive from this one and of course put it in a safe place for future use and uh, put a GoTech in there. Hopefully that will be as easy as this part was. And it should be. It's just a matter of removing these screws like this and then open the case. need to disconnect it to be able to open it properly. Here you can see the controller um, in the external drive 
and if I connect the cable back on that, it should be just a matter of connecting the GoTech directly to this, and uh, that should really be all that is to it. So let's just put that in a safe place. Someone put a filter on this. That's clever. It's filthy, so I need to wash it. Now it's just a simple matter of connecting this, like any floppy drive. And it should be ready for testing. So let's connect it back to the Amiga and give it a try. I've added the Lotus 2 on a USB stick, so that will be my test ADF. And success. Let's screw the cover back on and it should be ready for use. Time to put everything back in its place. Not sure where to put this. It, I won't use it regularly, but for now I just put it here. Like that. And now I have a way to check my system for errors. The GoTech in the, the external case and the DF1 to DF1 hack works perfectly. So now I'm better suited for not if, but when uh, things start to act up. I hope this was uh, interesting, fun, whatever to look at. And maybe you got some tip for, you, for your own Amigas as well. Cheers. Have a wonderful evening.